Currently we are prepping for some lumpia, which is a Filipino egg roll. And then we're also doing a churrasco with a chimichurri sauce. All right, real big question here. Mm -hmm. We're fancy. Mm -hmm. Can I have? Who's the better, the better chef? Right? Tell you what, that's a great duo in the kitchen. That's all I gotta say. Synergy, collaboration. I'm all about it. That's my boy. The fun thing got nothing. Oh boy, you know what? That's my boy. I'm not gonna talk bad about him. He made some good shrimp tacos the other day. So upon arrival, the bulk of the fire was in an open field with high grass, uh, roughly 10 to 20 acres. There was heavy vegetation to the west and to the north, swampy area. Uh, we were able to prevent the fire from spreading into the heavy stuff. It was a collaborative effort between uh, three different agencies, actually. We had three from Haines City out here, including myself. We had multiple county, whole county units. Uh, we had a total of five brush trucks. Um, Lake Alfred gave us one of theirs. Um, we attacked the fire with all the brush trucks, um, along with some dozer help. You know, they were cutting lines for us. And it took us probably about an hour to get it under control and probably about two hours to get it fully out. Hey, just watching our favorite show. Now, have you ever been in a girl group? No. In that case, in what will be the first ever prosecution of a former president. Now we're ready to roll some lumpia. You want to try to get it as tight as possible. You don't want to overload it. You can't put too much filling. It's tempting to put too much filling, but you can't do that. Typically, Filipinos only make this on special occasions, which for us, this is essentially the last time I'm going to cook for my guys because I will be officially transferring over to C-Shift. Next shift is my last shift, and they wanted to do something nice for me, so I wanted to be able to cook for them one last time. So that's what we're doing today because they're not going to get any kind of Filipino food. At least, I don't think, I don't think they have any other Filipino friends. It looks okay. Just okay? I mean, Taco Bell or Burger King might be better, but this will do. It's probably the same. Yeah. Those are fine. Same animal, maybe. 
Those are fine establishments. How much are you gonna miss Oops. this cooking? Oh. It's gonna stink. It's gonna be blown in sandwiches and I don't think I'm gonna eat all the time. Just go to their shift and eat. Okay, I won't eat at work. I'll just go to their shift and eat with them. So lucky. This is the flavoring right here. Oh, we're almost out. Yeah, that should taste good, Nate. Great job. Great job, Nate. Whatever makes you happy, Dave. You do you, baby. <laughs> Graceful. We got this close to eating. One bite, one bite of my steak. Are they conscious and alert? So the last call was an MVA they called in. Uh, a young man hit a light pole. Uh, he got a small head abrasion to his forehead, a little bit of bleeding. Uh, his parents came by, uh, he was going to work. So a lot of our calls are minor infractions where a car hits uh, another car and it's a light injury, light damage to the car, and no one's really injured. They could drive themselves back to the hospital or have a friend drive them and they can Uber home, Uber back to the car if they leave their car if they go by ambulance. Hey, my name is Brett DePiro. I've been with Haines City Fire Department for a little over 16 years now. I'm a lieutenant, best job ever. I did uh, five years in the military as a reverse osmosis water purification guy, which is just another fancy word for saying I was a plumber. So I did that for five years in the military, then I got out and did for another five years in the civilian world. And then I fell upon firefighting. It just worked out great. So how long have you been a lieutenant? Uh, I guess four, five, six, seven years. Yeah, I did a driver engineer for about eight, and I was just a firefighter for about one or two years. Did you like being a driver engineer? Driver engineer, you'll hear from me and everyone else that's ever been in the fire department, driver engineer is the best position there is. And that's probably because it's higher pay than the firefighter position but you do a little less work and you still sometimes get to go into fires. So you get paid a little bit more, you do a lot less of the grunt work as the firefighters would do, and you get to still go into fires and have fun and do what you really love. And what are the kind of calls that you really like in it? Yeah, the, most firefighters would say the same answers. Obviously, uh, most men or women that join the fire department love fighting fire. It's, a, it's dangerous, it's exciting, it's ex exhilarating. Uh, so fires are the mo best calls that we can get, especially if no one's injured and no one loses a significant amount of property. Uh, car fires are great because they're easy, they're quick, and usually there's no injuries. Uh, on the flip side, uh, any call where you could help someone, you really change the life around, regardless if it's just from talking with someone or administering first aid to someone, those calls will stick with you too. And, it just makes you feel good. What's probably the most rewarding thing that's happened to you since being here with Haines City? It's a big well, career. Well, easily. Uh, my wife is watching this, so it would be meeting my wife and getting married. That is the number one thing that's happened to me in the last 16 years. It's been wonderful. And did that happen as a result of the job? Uh, funny story. Uh, when I first got here, first couple months, the chief that was here at the time uh, asked me to set me up on a blind date with a co-worker of his wife. So I had no choice but to say yes. So fortunately, when I did do the blind date, uh, she was beautiful and we fell in love and got married.
the caveat to that, it was supposed to be the chief. I was new, and so was the other guy that looks like me, Mr. Patukas, which you probably have already met. It was supposed to be him who was on the blind date, not me, but that worked out, so he owes me one. Um, that's so crazy. Does your wife know that? Yes. <laughs> have they talked about that? It's no, I won't that. let them near each other. <laughs> Because she'll trade me in, I bet. <laughs> Just out of case. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be careful. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's a battalion chief. Yeah, well, so. you know. <laughs> Zach, I need your help. I need you to eat a chocolate chip cookie. Oh, <laughs> oh shoot, cuz. Oh! Yeah, baby. Very good. If I had more hands, I would have gotten you a cup of milk. I'll do better next time. So we were dispatched to a sick person and uh, this residence, there's three generations that live there. We've been to this house a few times before. The 86 year old mother had uh, not been feeling well. She went to the hospital. She just got discharged and walked in the front door. Hadn't been home a half an hour and she wanted to go back to the hospital. Her daughter was encouraging her to just rest. Let's just lay down, rest, I'll make you some tea. But she wanted to go back to the hospital for some reason, thinking that she'll you know, get her ailments taken care of. The paramedic had arrived on scene from Polk County Fire Rescue and had encouraged her to follow up with her primary care physician, which is really what needs to be done. There was no immediate life threats that we could tell. Vital signs were within normal limits stable she just uh, doesn't feel well she wants that taken care of so plumber my name is David Borowski I'm a driver engineer and I've been with Haines City almost 20 years what did you do before firefighting worked for the sheriff's department for a few years and before that I was in the military what did you do in the military I was a police officer in the military Okay. in the air force was it base operations mostly or no not really i was kind of young gun ho you know high speed low drag and i was gone a lot i deployed a lot volunteered for a lot of special programs special missions special tasks and had a good time what made you decide to transition from this kind of law enforcement path into firefighting it's the same thing it's same uh you know fire and police camaraderie and uh kind of said that traded the blue light in for the red light scenario you're nearing retirement yes what are you looking forward to most uh fishing just fishing just fishing yeah bought a house in arkansas light on the little red river right out my back door literally live on the river i like it i do too i can't okay. wait you got 35 more days and eight more hours yeah i joke that you might be counting but I'm you've counting. got it down at the hour <laughs> I'm counting. What do you think you're going to miss the most uh, from this department, at least, when you retire? Wow, that's a tough one. Going to miss my truck. Miss my truck, I'm going to miss driving it. I'm going to miss responding to calls and going to calls and, you know. How long have you been a driver engineer? don't remember it's been so long <laughs> it's too long to remember it's safe to say the way you talk about it you like it it's what i wanted to do i told them that when i first got hired here because i was kind of an old person it's in my early 40s when i went to the academy and you know and um 
when I got hired here. Like coming out of the military, being a sergeant, being in charge a lot of times and doing things, kind of told them I didn't want to do that here. I didn't want to have to babysit nobody. I didn't want to have to take care of anybody else but myself. I just wanted to take care of myself. And uh, I didn't want to go much farther than that. And all I wanted to do was drive the trucks. So how long have you had this particular engine? This truck, I believe, has been down here for the four years that we've been down here at this station. This is the driver's area, the driver's seat. This is where the, the engineer rides in it. Everything he needs to do from here, as far as lights, sirens, and equipment, and what monitoring the vehicle, or what it's doing, what the condition is, oil temperature, oil pressure, water temperature, stuff like that. It's all available to him up here. The lieutenant's seat sits up here. Generally, they always put the lieutenant up in here. He has all his gear because he'll be bunking out. He has a computer for our calls to come into with dispatch so he can uh, type in we're on scene, we're under control. You go back into here, you have two seats back here so we can have two firefighters, but we only have three people down here. So this one firefighter rides back here by himself. Gives him a lot of room, he can bunk out, he can get dressed. He needs to hit the ground running, fully dressed, fully bunkered out, ready to go. The center of this truck right here is the engineer panel and all the outlets and discharges and intakes and the pump for the truck. This is the main life of the truck, right, heart of the truck right here. This is what we have to use to fight the fires with, we, the pump and the water. How much water can this engine hold on board? It has a 500 gallon tank on it. Then we just go down through our compartments. Without the truck getting us to the call and without the tools to do the job, we're useless. So that's why I find this to be the most, a very important or most important piece of equipment is the truck and everything on it. These are struts, they call them struts. They're for stabilizing vehicles that are turned over on their side, over on their roof. It's to stabilize it so when we're working on it, maybe possibly get a patient out or something, the vehicle won't move and cause more damage or hurt people. These, these are put up there to stabilize it. We have, and then down here, we have our fire extinguishers for water extinguisher, CO2 and dry chem. We have some more straps, more chains, power tools, stuff like that that we might have to use on the scene to stabilize, cut a vehicle, get into it, do what we got to do with the vehicle to take care of patients. Then like this compartment, we've isolated into more of like a high rise. This is for uh, firefighter rescue, high rise packs. This is for fires in, in buildings that are multiple floors, stuff like that. Then we move back to here, we have our more stuff for vehicles. This is our cribbing, stabilizing vehicles and calls. We have a toolbox, we have more cribbings, fire poles, even have an easy out, get in the cars that are locked out. But I think one of the best things we have, and the most thing that most people associate the fire department with, is the old, the hearse tools. They were the original rescue tool, and they're still around today. When I first started here, we had hydraulics. We had a gasoline powered hydraulic pump that we'd have to start that up. We had 100 feet of hose. With an extension, we'd go out another 100 feet of hydraulic hose. That would have to attach to the, whole, ho the tool, and then we could do what we needed to do with it. Well, they wanted to go to these battery operated things. And it, my first impression when I was there was I'm old school. I like my hydraulic tools. There's no way these batteries are going to do anything. And this is, there's, there, we shouldn't have them. Well, I ate my words on that for sure, because I love these tools. We get back over here, this side, we have ram, stand, ram fan for ventilation of a house fires. We got our chainsaw, K tool, Chainsaw, we can cut wooden roofs open, we can cut wooden doors, stuff like that. The K-12, we can cut steel, we can cut concrete, and we can cut like a garage door, metal garage door opener, we, a garage door, we can use that to cut open things. We got our ladders, our saws, our cutters, our Kate, our, our um, halogens and stuff like that. Of course, we have, you know, the infamous, I mean, what's a firefighter without his axe, you know what I mean? So that's, that's what we have in that compartment there. This one here, though, is kind of a specialty um, compartment. This is known as the engineer's compartment. This is where the engineer has all of his uh, 
tools, all his fittings, his air pack, his gears in here. Everything in here is for him to use to do the job that he needs to do on a scene. It makes you feel good when you have your own compartment. You know, you feel like you're somebody. Like, hey, that's, what are you doing in my part? Your corner office. If my you corner will. office. That's right. Step right into my office. Sit down and talk about anything you want. Just make it short because I ain't got all day. Dispatched to a traumatic injury call. We got on scene. Uh, we made contact. We made contact with the parents. It turns out it was a two-year-old uh, girl, and she had been um, playing with. It looked like a chopstick with like a ball at the end. Just a piece of a wooden toy, I guess. Had it in her mouth. Was jumping and. The, uh, the toy, when she fell, it hit the back of her throat, caused probably a little tissue, uh, soft tissue damage, caused her to vomit, and uh, she got really scared. Thankfully, her um, her airway was protected, or she was still able to breathe, and um, we got there, and she was conscious and alert, crying appropriately. Her parents said that her, um, her presentation was, was normal. So we had a helicopter on standby just in case we had to fly her out. My name is Nathaniel Tanayo. I go by Nate. I'm a driver engineer. I uh, was hired in October of 2020. Why firefighting? It serves my ikigai. Uh, ikigai is a Japanese term um, that encompasses um, it, what you do uh, as far as work, uh, incorporates concepts like, you know, your passion, um, your mission. Uh, is it something you can get paid for? Is it, uh, does it have some kind of you know, benefit to your community or your family, your loved ones? And um, then in 2017, I had a pretty serious motorcycle wreck and uh, Auburndale Fire and Polk County Fire Rescue had come to my aid, and I was a trauma alert. Uh, I went to Lakeland Regional, and I had to have um, two major surgeries and had uh, six broken ribs, two, um, um, two flail segments, uh, had a collapsed lung, um, and they had to decompress me had a liter and a half of fluid taken out of my chest cavity. And it was an experience. Um, but after healing from that, um, I thought it would be fitting to be able to reciprocate that somehow. So I was able to heal up about three and a half weeks at Lakeland Regional, uh, seven months of rehab therapy. I was out of work about seven months and it wasn't a very fun time season in life. Um, but I was able to bounce back. I'm very grateful, very thankful for that. And now I get to be on the giving end. And it's very rewarding. So have you been at Station 2 your whole time with Haines City Fire? No, I started off at Station 1. And, uh, and then I think I've been here at Station 2 for about a year, maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about going back to station one and switching shifts? I'm open. I'm open to it. Um, I volunteered to, uh, to go. I just want to be a team player and help out uh, how I can. The guys on uh, B shift over at station one, they've got great camaraderie camaraderie. And uh, I think that's awesome. 
and I want to help protect that because those are good dudes and um, they work well together. And obviously we're not going to have Dave, you know, uh, uproot himself three months, four months before he retires. So we got to protect Dave, let Dave, you know, enjoy his last couple months before he retires. What do you like most about working for the fire department? That's a good question. Um, I would say the sense of fulfillment. It's a noble position. Um, by no means is it a, a perfect job. I don't think there is a perfect job. But um, I think uh, we each give meaning and purpose to our lives. And there's times where we really get to... Uh, be of help, of service, and do good. And that's very rewarding. Can't put a price tag on that. Sorry. Well, we're filming here. We only have two spices garlic powder, but what's the other one you think?